Everyone, this three questions with Lamont Dean. Oh, I'm so excited about this episode today, man. So excited. I, I've actually had the pleasure to meet Lamont. Uh, I did a workshop recently with a group of administrators, board trustees, uh, just outside of Austin, Texas. And Lamont, uh, I met him there. And he not only did I meet him there, and he just totally impressed me with the work that he's doing at Chapel I got to you know, I got to do this. In Chapel Hill ISD. <laughs> Gonna give a little shout out to Chapel Hill, right? No doubt, no doubt. But but what was really cool is um, I pulled up Lamont to do a video to talk about some of the great stuff that he's doing. And what's funny, I don't I don't know if you remember this. Right in the middle of your talking, I was just blown away by your saying. I looked at my camera. I'm like, oh, I'm not even recording this. I forgot to press record, and I was so embarrassed. I'm like, ah, oh, it was so good. But what what's beautiful is that. Um, basically right after Lamont started doing the same thing with the staff, with his community, with his students. So that's one of the things I love about social media is that we have these really incredible experiences, um, on these days, but it's like, not like summer camp when we were kids where we're like, Hey, we'll be best friends. And then we never see each other ever again. It's like, we connect after the fact. So, uh, Lamont is actually the superintendent in Chapel Hill ISD, incredible educator. Lamont, thanks so much for taking the time out of your busy day to, to, uh, join me today. Well, George, thank you for having me. It's truly an honor uh, to be here and also uh, speak a little bit about our district and some of the good things that we're doing. Yeah, and and we were we were just uh, sitting here before. I always do this little kind of breakdown um, just to kind of just chat, see some, you know, talk about, kind of get some ideas of where the podcast will go. And I'm telling you, Chapel Hill ISD, you're going to see some, uh, you're going to learn some incredible lessons from Lamont and his community, just some of the stuff that they do. And I'll do a little shout out to East Texas, right? Because I got to say East Texas, right? Right. Right. <laughs> it's real so no doubt. Right. And so, hey, Lamont, I know that you've been an educator for a while. You've been in Chapel Hill. You grew up there, uh, went away for a little bit, came back. So when you think about the incredible teachers that you've had, you know, in your career uh, that you worked with, the ones that you had when you were a kid, who's a teacher that you think of who really inspired you and why? Well, you know, as I think about the teacher that inspired me, I go back to my uh, ninth grade English teacher. And, you know, I'll tell you a little story on why uh, she inspired me so much. Uh, she was always a person that tried to instill confidence in me. I was not a uh, high academia, if you will, I was probably not the valedictorian salutatorian in the class. I uh, came from humble beginnings and, uh, you know, from a single parent household. And my mom worked a lot. Uh, and so her focus was trying to provide for her her three children as a single mother, it was not always making sure I got, I got my homework done. And so um, when I became a freshman, I was writing a paper. I remember this as if it was yesterday. This is probably one of the things that molded me as an educator. Uh, I was writing a paper and uh, for English class and Miss Bogue took the paper, uh, was her name, and uh, she took it home and, and of course she, she brought it back uh, and she called me up to her desk and she uh, told me, she said, Lamont, I think this is the best paper that I've ever wrote, read. And, you know, me hearing that, even repeating the story gives me chills just thinking about that. And as I reflect now, I'm quite sure it was not the best paper uh, that she has ever had ever read. But she put a lot of green marks on the paper and the green, uh, there was no red there. Of course, back in the day when teachers right. used to grade papers with red ink, you would go through and you would kind of cringe to be able to see. You think that it's death by paper because you see all the red ink and the blood on it. Uh, not to get too gory, but it had all green uh, writing and she would tell me how much she loved this. And it was excellent here. And her way of telling me that you know, maybe I could I could do maybe a little bit word changing here, which as we were doing some revising and editing. But one of the things that was so impactful to me that to add to the story is her mother was also an educator. And she told me that she took this my paper home um, and let her mother read it. And then her mother at the very end of the paper wrote me a note and just told me how wonderful the paper it was, you know, continuing, uh, continue to, to work hard to, to get better as a writer and, and to be a better student. And she gave that paper to me. I don't even remember what I made on the paper. I just remember that conversation. I remember that, that statement, uh, that within itself gave me so much confidence as a student. And it really encouraged me, uh, to do better. And I really wanted to do better for her. I wanted to 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 continue to make her proud uh, because of the efforts and the things that she wrote back on that paper. So she was one of the ones that I remember as my early teachers that uh, 
inspired me. Uh, one of the other ones, if I can add one, I think this is really important to note. Again, me talking about me coming from humble beginnings. And I don't remember her name, but I do remember I was probably I was in grade school, probably third or fourth grade. And um, I had a teacher that was uh, really trying to instill the power of, of reading uh, to me and to my students. And uh, I got engaged with reading a lot pretty early. I was pretty fascinated by the words on the, the paper and the stories that it came together. And she saw that in me and she wanted me to read more. And so um, I don't think she was really allowed to do this, but um, she asked my mother if she could bring, because she can come visit uh, my home uh, one evening. I still remember this. I lived on a, a long dirt road and uh, I was excited that she was going to come to my house and you can see the headlights and the dust coming up on the road while she was driving down. Now, con con keep this in mind. Uh, I was concerned also what that meeting was about. Mm -hmm. uh, but when she came in, she met with my mother and I in our uh, living room. Um, she sat on the couch. She told my mother how much I love to read. And she brought what looks like a half a dozen books for me. And she wanted to give this to me and just continue to encourage me to read. But she took out of her busy day. It was the evening time. Remember, it was it was uh, dark because she had lights on a car. Uh, but she gave me books. And again, I was so uh, committed to uh, her primarily because she took those steps to ensure that she can empower the uh, the reading into me that I, I quickly read all the books and really wanted more. So it was those two teachers, those two moments wow. that was really impactful to me. And they they really changed the course of me as an educator. OK, we got to give them a shout out. That's absolutely awesome. You know, it, it's funny because you you know, you're very accomplished. You're superintendents of the place that you grew up. And I think a lot of times people see people that are in positions like yours and they don't realize how much of an impact a teacher had early on, right? Like just those little confidence builders and things that have made such a difference that have led you. And they must be so incredibly proud of you, but also not surprised. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no doubt. You know, I, I actually ran into to my uh, English teacher uh, this was years ago. But, uh, you know, as we quite often say, we don't always get to see the rest of the story. You know, when children right. leave your grade school, middle school or even high school, they go off into this big world and you don't get the chance to see how they turn out always. Uh, unless it's sometimes a bad thing when you may see them on the news. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh, but at the same time, she ran to me and she was telling me how proud she was and how passionate. And I was remind, reminded her of that story. She remembered it like it was yesterday. And so those types of stories, those types of things is what has uh, shaped me as an educator. And so hopefully I'm able to pay that forward to the children. That, that gave me chills, man. That, that was yeah. incredible. All right. So you are currently a superintendent. I know you've done a, a, a multitude of administrative jobs. Uh, also has been a, a, an educator and a teacher as well. So you think about all the administrators you've worked with, maybe ones that you had as a kid, like who's an administrator that you had that really inspired you or that you worked with and why? You know, I, I've worked with a lot of really good administrators and one that has inspired me and just been, man, he'd been that guy for me. His name is uh, Jamie Holder. Uh, he was um, a former principal of mine when I was a coach uh, uh, at a neighboring district, Lindale um, ISD in, in Lindale, Texas, just about a rock's throw. We call it that in East Texas. That's that East Texas right. link I told you about. <laughs> That's East Texas. Uh, but he uh, he was very impactful. Man, he was just an awesome guy. Just um, really got to know him a lot. Uh, I was working with his children who were students and student athletes when I was a coach there in Lindale. Uh, but I remember one of the conversations that uh, he had with me, he was always encouraging, always inspiring. And I would tell you this to this day, he still is. He's a gentleman when I need a, some, some, some guidance, some coaching, uh, even that father figure to lean on Jamie Holder is the guy that I, that I call, but he, he told me this, and I was at an impasse. I had got an opportunity to get out of coaching and get into administration, although I hadn't gone to school to be an administrator. I was going to be a coach forever. Uh, right. I love football and I love working with children. And and I was very passionate about that. And I see so nothing other than what I was doing at the actual time. And so uh, I remember I, I went to him and I went to seek advice and he gave me a statement, gave me a quote. I, I live by quotes, quotes to me are short stories uh, just to kind of connect meaning to a lot of things we do. And he told me, you know, the higher up the flagpole you are, the more people you can help. 
And uh, that has stuck with me a long time. He told me primarily the student athletes that you're working with right now, you may hit 100, uh, maybe 200 or so student athletes. Uh, but if you get into administration, you're high up that flagpole and now you get a chance to help a whole campus. Uh, and then I start to use that as it guided me throughout my professional career. Um, when I was a principal, again, fell in love with children. Um, I was at an impasse, was getting ready to leave the district from leaving Lindale over to uh, another school district that I went to and ultimately end up coming to Chapel Hill. He said, hey, there's children everywhere and you're going to fall in love with every uh, children, no matter what district you're in. So don't yeah. get married just to one district. And so <laughs> he's been one of those men that's been very impactful to me. I still call him uh, to this day. And uh, he's he's definitely been an impactful administrator to me. We got to get we got to give that. A shout out there. You. I, you know, um, I, I share the story and I've shared it millions of times. Uh, the impact my parents have had and really realizing how they ran their restaurant and how I ran a school and how I was in leadership positions and how similar those were, roles were really like they, they were such, you know, like just always made people feel really welcome, warm while doing these incredible things, even though they were the owners of the restaurant and kind of seeing that. And it, they always made me think about what is the experience when people walk into schools? Right? How do people feel when you're here? How do you kind of lift people up? And just seeing that, and there's so much that resonates, you know, kind of where you're, I love that that story about really, you know, the higher you go up, you know, the more people you serve, and how important that actually is. Absolutely. Now, when I met you um, at this event, uh, you you really stuck out to me, and what one of the reasons you stuck out, and I think was really powerful to me was I knew that you were a superintendent. I, and it was funny because I'm a big basketball guy and I'm like, you're from Chapel Hill? I'm like, yeah. and you're like yeah, it's actually a place in Texas. Right. So like, oh, Chapel Hill, I thought it was, you know, you know, North Carolina, Tar Heels kind of thing. Right. And so one of the things that really resonated with me is I knew you're a superintendent, but you had this incredible craving for learning. And I'm, I'm being honest right now. Some superintendents are like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Like, you know, I, I've made it to, you know, the, the highest position in, in uh, you know, in, in our district. And that's kind of just what it is. But you have not rested. Like, you can just tell you're just craving to grow and to get better, which I think is such a great model for the people you serve, right? When they see the superintendent doing this, it doesn't give you a reason to, like, hold on to what you've done, you know, solely in the past. And so you look, so even, even I can tell and maybe, I, and I, we talked a little bit about this. I can tell you are better now from just a couple of weeks ago, seeing all the stuff that you're sharing because, because you have a, a craving for learning. So if you can go back to your first years of teaching and I guarantee you're way better at what you do now than you were then. Right. Cause yeah. there's no way you wouldn't have grown just because of your, your focus on that. What advice would you give to your first year teacher Lamont uh, that in that first year? Well, I, I agree with uh, everything that you said, and, and I want to be a model uh, uh, for that, uh, for that thirst of learning to our district. I always want to uh, continue to, to, to be at higher uh, status than what we are right now. We continuously to say we want to raise the bar uh, from a quote from our most my favorite movie is Attitude Reflects Leadership. And so if we're not uh, leading in the way that we want others to uh, to 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 grow, uh, then uh, growth is a mindset. And so that attitude does reflect leadership. And so I think I, that's important to us. You know, to a younger Lamondi, uh, when I first started education years ago, the one thing, the advice I would give to myself is that there's nothing productive that will come from a non-trusting relationship and relationships matter. I mean, relationships with everybody matter. And I, I felt like I was given that gift, that tool um, from my grandfather, you know, when he was uh, being that pastor, his goal was to help everybody. Uh, he had um, 18 plus children and I hear stories about uh, others identify that even though I was local in this area, I was friends with your aunt, uncle and mother and your grandfather would feed us as well, although he had a house full of children. Uh, and he was always, uh, you know, service before self kind of mentality. Uh, but my advice to my younger self was relationships matter relationships matter. When you look at growth of students, when you look at uh, leadership, 
capacity amongst administrators, when you look at leadership capacity amongst administrators and everything, the issues that we have in life in, in the world come from not having productive relationships. And I think my advice to me back then was just ensure that every child matters, you know, treat them all like they're your own. Uh, and ensure that you are doing the very best for the people that you serve, whether that be in the classroom at the time or in my role now as a superintendent. It's it all about relationships. And so uh, that to me is a very, very important entity. And that would be the advice I would give to myself then. But that would also be the advice that I would give myself now. I love that. And, you know, just just connecting with you has been um, awesome. And I, I love I love how you are using your position you're using your uh flexibility to move a little bit more than maybe a teacher could go from classroom to classroom to share the incredible stories that are happening uh in chapel hill isd so um i can tell your your community your district because I, I you know for me and i know kind of we were talking about this the, the school is the community in many cases, right? Like it is, it is not just a part of the community. A lot of people connect and know each other because of the relationships that we make in school. So I know they're really blessed to have you. And so I feel really blessed to um, have met you that day. And I love that we're staying connected. I've, I've blogged about you and you can see that blog post yeah. down below, which was, you know, and totally, I, you had no idea I was going to do that. And I honestly had no idea until I saw, I'm like, wow, this guy is like, he is not messing around. He is diving into this stuff, which I was so impressed by. So make sure you give uh, Lamond a, a follow. You can follow him at Dean underscore CHISD. And uh, just he's going to share some incredible stories. I know he's going to inspire you just like he's inspired me. So Lamond, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, my friend.